My journey in construction began at an early age, in our small village in eastern Anatolia, where Turks, Kurds, Armenians, and Bektashis live together. In the village, we didn't have debates about gender inequality. It went without saying, men or women, everyone worked together on all tasks, including construction. Once every few summers, all our neighbors relatives, aunts, uncles, grandmother, they would all come together for a repair and restoration work on the house facades. When finished, they would cover the adobe with a single layer of white gypsum coating, and then they would have each one of the grandchildren come and leave a handprint on the walls to seal the work. That was a measure of how much you grow up since the last project. A decade later, uh, for apprenticeship, just wanting to learn how real projects were designed and built, I went to work for an architecture firm. I learned how to tape sketch paper, how to use ink for drafting. My favorite part was to take site photos on behalf of real college interns who didn't want to get dust in their clothes or climb ladders or go into weird parts of the construction site. Then comes university. <laughs> uh, like every young, excited person wanting to save the world, bring justice for all, I joined my suffragettes. There, I met the members of the LGBTQ community, including transgender sex workers, who felt like they were forced into their line of work by a lack of any alternative jobs to survive, and the daily discrimination. Their stories touched me and gave me my ultimate goal and the business idea. To find a business where majority of my colleagues would be people who were experiencing discrimination, rejected by the society, and seen as misfits. With this in mind, during the war, I traveled to Syrian border to team up with Support to Life, a group that helps displaced people to build a refugee center from shipping containers. From there, I went to Van, another Eastern Anatolian city. This time, I joined forces with Hisar Anatolian Support Society to build a center for local women who are carpet makers and beekeepers. We wanted to build a center for them to work and gather together. I wanted the women to build the center themselves. With this idea in mind, the design was based on the elements they were familiar with from their daily life. We would call them bees and then make all the spaces in the shape of honeycombs in hexagons so they would recognize what they are doing. We asked them to design a carpet with all the traditional local motifs just the way they do all the time, which I traced in AutoCAD, a software we use for architecture, engineering, and all building industry, to be projected onto the walls on cement, where the women could use recycled mosaic tiles to match their own carpet design. Fast forward those uh, construction village days, three decades, I'm still doing the same thing, only on larger buildings than my grandmother's house. Out of all places in the world, I feel more at home in New York City. The biggest reason for that is the city's diversity. I fit. I feel welcomed. We all do. Diversity brings us so close together. It makes us understand each other. It makes us discover all the similarities while appreciating our differences. I believe there is never enough diversity. It helps us to have a peaceful, hate-free world. It's clearly absurd to have an industry that is so single gender dominated. An industry I love the most, construction. Construction is fulfillment. 
seeing what you just built, giving shelter to other people is incomparable. Construction is freedom. Moving in the sunshine, wind, rain, snow, all reminders of existence, feeling alive. Construction is guaranteed global, lifelong skills. You can earn a living much, much, much more than many other industries. Construction gives you skills that work in every country, which makes it easy to be mobile and empowered. Once united, being a part of a trade union, construction is human rights and workers' rights. Limited work hours, vacation, no work in the heat, not in extreme cold. I don't know if you can tell, but I love construction. I feel happy and fulfilled every single day for doing this work. But I'm isolated in a heavily male-dominated industry. Without the diversity, we, the misfits at the site, feel unnaturally aggressive, protective, artificially masculine, and defensive. It's not a glass ceiling, it's a glass box, limiting movement in every direction. We need and want other women and the members of the LGBTQ community to work with us, shoulder to shoulder, side by side. Recently, my company is certified as a woman-owned business enterprise by the city of New York. That means now we can bid on city projects. Our goal is to build a city with a majority of women and LGBTQ construction workforce. We believe if we grow in number just by standing together, we get the recognition, power, respect, and the rights we deserve. Some days, we work with men who treat us like we are the guests for them at the construction site. Some days, we are heavily underutilized. Some days, other women tell us that it's not in our delicate nature to work at construction sites. Some days, we are told it's just unusual, very, very unusual. For centuries, women were left out of the design field. We were barred from practicing architecture or engineering. Today, we are designing buildings, towns, cities. And the male-dominated design industry is now history. Let's do the same thing for the construction workforce. Let's not let anybody tell us what the limit is or how much we are capable of doing. Let's stop holding ourselves back. Let's not be discouraged by the misbelief of certain jobs are not in our nature. Oops. It has nothing to do with nature. It's just work. You try it. You train for it. You learn it. Eventually, you get paid for it. Let's break that glass box. Let's wear the hard hats. Let's unite. Let's bring the rainbow to the construction site. Thank you. Voila.